Welcome. In this lecture, lecture we're going to look at potential energy functions and what analyzing their graphs can do for us. And we're going to look at how we can look at potential energy function graphs and determine if something is at stable or unstable equilibrium. Um, so first off, let's look at uh, a spring function. And that's not what I wanted to do. A spring function um, for the force of a spring is equal to negative kx, where x is the displacement from rest position on the spring. And we remember also that the potential energy of a function is equal to the opposite of the integral of the force of that function with respect to x. So if we want to look at the potential energy of a spring, we have to take the opposite of negative kx with respect to x. And the negatives go away. The integral of kx is 1 half kx squared. So our potential energy for the spring at any displacement x is going to be 1 half kx squared. Remember, there was a constant of integration here, plus c, but a spring's potential energy when unstretched is equal to 0. All right, so now let's graph this and take a look at what the graph of this function can tell us. So if we graph the potential energy of this spring with respect to x, we see that it's a parabola. And let's just go ahead and draw the generalized form of our parabola right here. And so this is the function, the graph of the potential energy with any displacement x. Now, if the potential energy of the spring is equal to, so if the potential energy of the spring is equal to the integral of the force with respect to x, we can differentiate both sides with respect to x, and we end up with du dx is equal to the opposite of the force. So if we take the derivative of the potential energy function with respect to x, we end up with the opposite of the force. Now remember way back in the day that the derivative of a function is equal to the slope of the tangent line. So if this is some position x1, we take the derivative of the function here, we get a tangent line here. This is f, sorry, the magnitude of the force at x1. Um, except it's opposite. So we have a positive slope here, which means that at x1, we get a negative force. So if we displace the spring some positive direction, we get a force that acts back the other way. Let's draw this pictorially here. If this is our spring at unstretched length, x0, and we then stretch it out, some extra length x1, then the spring applies a force back the other direction, opposite of x1, the displacement. So if x is positive, the force that the spring applies is going to be negative. And if f is negative, as it would be over here if we had a negative, so negative x1, then we would get a negative slope, but this is going to give us a positive force. on this side, OK? So what this leads to is, uh, first, if we have the potential energy function, we can find the force at any position x. If we have the potential energy function, we can also find a function for the force at any position x. Secondly, what this also leads is to this idea of stability. With the spring, we see that any small displacement is going to give us a force that is going to restore it back towards displacement. So if we displace it positively, the spring applies a force in the negative direction, wanting to go back to its stable equilibrium spot of x naught. If we displace the spring negatively, we get a force acting towards the positive direction. Again, back towards that stable x naught position. So what we have here, if we have a potential energy function that has a minimum that minimum represents a point of stable equilibrium. So let's make this explicit. The minimum of a potential energy function is a point 
of stable equilibrium. Because the restoring force is back towards the initial position, x naught. All right? Conversely, we could see a potential energy function that has a maximum. So if this is our potential energy function here with respect to x, and we've got an upside down parabola, then this point right here, whatever this x1 is, represents a point of unstable equilibrium. Because if we displace our object to some positive delta x, we've got a negative slope here, which gives us a positive force. And the positive force means that if we displace it in the positive direction, we also get a force acting in that same direction, which is going to make it want to displace even, either even further to the right. And over here on the other side, if we displace it some negative delta x, then we see we have a positive slope, but that means a negative force. So if we displace it to the left, we get a force acting to the left, which is going to cause a further displacement to the left. So a maximum is a point of unstable equilibrium. So they're both points of equilibrium. If we're right at this point, x1, at the very, very top of this graph, then we'll be at equilibrium. But just a tiny displacement to either side will cause the object to move further in the direction that we displaced it. So a displacement to the right makes a force arise that forces it to the right. If we displace it to the left, the opposite happens. All right, so compare that again back to what we just had. If we look at here, this guy at the bottom, at the minimum of our graph, is a point of stable equilibrium. Because if we displace it to the right over here, we get a force arise that makes it want to go back to the left, back to that point of equilibrium. If we displace it to the left, we get a force arise that makes it want to go back to that point of equilibrium. All right, so stable versus unstable. Now there's a third option here. If we've got a potential energy function that looks a little bit like a cubic function, comes up like this, flattens out, and then comes up again, then we've got a point of equilibrium here that if we displace it to the right or the left, a small displacement to the right or the left gives no force arising because we've got tangent lines here that are all zero. The slopes of the tangent lines are zero, so no force arises. So as long as we do small displacements here, we get a point of neutral equilibrium. But you can see in all three of these cases, we're looking for places where the potential energy graph with respect to x is a zero slope. We've got a zero slope at this point right here. We have a zero slope when we have a maximum, and we have a zero slope when we have a minimum. And in calculus, you should have been doing some work on first derivative tests and second derivative tests to see if these critical points maximums are maximums or minimums, or neither. So you can apply that here to these problems in physics, OK? Taking this one step further, if the potential energy is equal to the opposite of the derivative of f dx, then what do we get if we do a definite integral of our force with respect to our displacement? So let's take a look at, again, a graph of the spring force, all right, which is equal to negative kx. So we have a linear graph here. If this is f and this is x, then our graph comes down like this with a slope of negative k. So let's say that we integrate this function, u, from some point 1 to some point 2 is equal to all right, so we want to find the potential energy involved, the change of potential energy involved in moving this system from some x1 to some 
x2, and that's going to involve the definite integral from position 1 to position 2 of f of x dx. And we remember that the definite integral of a function will give us the area under the curve. So the area between the curve and the x-axis here for the force with respect to position is going to give us the change in the potential energy from position 1 to position 2. And here we see that the change in potential energy is negative because our area is under the x-axis, but remember that this change in potential energy is equal to the negative integral. So actually that negative area becomes a positive. So it's the opposite of the change. So if the change here, if the area under the curve here is negative, that means that our change in potential energy is positive. And if we're talking about a spring, we're stretching it from some position x1 even further to some position x2. So we stretch the spring out more. That means there's going to be more potential energy in the system. So the change in potential energy is positive. And if we look at a graph of gravity versus position. So this is the force of gravity versus, uh, no, let's say y, sorry, not in terms of x, but in terms of y, then the force of gravity never changes. All right, so at every position, we've got a force of gravity that is some negative value, the weight of the object, mg. So if we want to find the change in potential energy, from some initial height, y1, to some other height, y2. Again, the change in potential energy from 1 to 2 is equal to the opposite of the integral from 1 to 2 of the force of gravity with respect to y. And this, again, is going to give us the area under the curve. And the area under the curve here is negative. But we've got the opposite of that. So this is equal to the opposite of the change in the potential energy from 1 to 2. All right? So to kind of give an overview again here, if we take the derivative of the potential energy with respect to x, that graph, potential energy graphed versus the position, the derivative of that gives us the opposite of the force. And remember, that's the slope of the line. And we can look at our equilibrium. If we've got a maximum, we're looking at unstable equilibrium. If we have a minimum, we're looking at a stable equilibrium value right here. And if we have a critical point, but it's neither a maximum nor a minimum, we're talking about neutral equilibrium. And taking it one step further, if we take the definite integral of the force function with respect to position, we're going to take the opposite of that, and it's going to give us the change in potential energy. All right? So to review the derivative of the potential energy with respect to position is equal to the opposite of the force. And if we want to find the change in potential energy, we have to integrate from some position 1 to 2. It's the opposite of that integral of f of x dx, or f of y dy, depending on if we're talking about springs or gravity. All right, so I will see you next time. Bye.